Hi, welcome to Physics University. I'm Austin, and today I wanted to discuss some sense-making techniques, uh, some things that you can use in your everyday practice problems, homework problems, or exams to help check your answers and hopefully score better and get more points. Okay, uh, so let's just jump right in. The first sense-making technique that we normally use is sign, checking whether your answer is positive or negative and what would you expect it to be. For example, mass should be a positive number. If you solve for a mass, and let's just say you go through your problem and you eventually get that the mass is equal to negative 150 kilograms, well, that doesn't really make sense to me. Um, that's, not, that's not a reasonable number because mass is a positive number. You can't have negative mass. So you need to go back into your problem, look through your derivation, your algebraic maneuvers, wherever you go, and see where you might have made a mistake because your answer is not correct. It's not reasonable. Um, you should be checking your sign every problem. It's the easiest one to check. Just quickly do, do I expect it to be positive or negative? And do I get positive or negative out? Simple, easy, do it 100% of your problems. Okay. Next is dimensionality. Um, dimensionality is just the generic or generalized form of units. So let's just say the dimensions of something are length, the units of length then are meters. Um, but the dimensions would be the generic length, generic time, generic whatever. Um, so do the dimensions or units of the quantity make sense? Um, so for this, uh, one example of a quiz that we just gave a couple weeks ago was that the velocity is equal to the square root of r over m1 times m2g minus a buoyancy force, okay? This is from an example problem. You don't really need to know anything about this, but when I just look at this, yeah, I see velocity and I should get something like meters per second, and many people would be tempted to just write meters per second, but you actually need to go through the process of checking each of these units, seeing how they cancel, and seeing if you actually get out meters per second, because you might not have. You might have messed up in your algebra somewhere, you might have made a mistake, and you might not get meters per second out. So let's actually go through this. So the units of R, a radius is a distance, so that's meters. Mass is kilograms. Mass again is kilograms. G is an acceleration, which is meters per second squared, minus a force, which is Newton, which is a kilogram meter per second squared. Right off the bat, you know that if I'm subtracting two quantities, they have to have the same units in order to subtract them. So that's good. These have the right units. Okay. So I'm going to simplify and I'm going to just make it meters per kilogram times just a simplified quantity in the middle, which is kilograms meters per second squared. Okay. My kilograms cancel and I'm left with the square root of meters squared per second squared, which equals meters per second, which is a velocity. Beautiful, okay? You need to go through each problem and when you get an, an equation, you need to check that the units actually work out for that equation, okay? In this case it did, great. If it doesn't, then you know that your equation is wrong and you can go fix it. Order of magnitude, really straightforward. Make a rough estimate for what you expect your answer to be rough uh, estimate in terms of order of magnitude. So one, 10, 100, 1,000. Does your answer seem reasonable to that estimate? Example, a long walk is a couple of kilometers, not three meters. Um, so, hey, I'm looking for the answer in roughly, you know, three to five kilometers. I get three centimeters. I know I made a mistake, okay? Um, so it's just a rough estimate, rough guess, just to see if your answer makes sense. Again, these are sense-making techniques. We're just trying to see if our answer is a reasonable answer. Not totally 100% correct, but at least it's reasonable. Graphical analysis, does your graph behave as expected? Does the function increase with time like expected? This one isn't used very often. Um, it's typically used when given a graph. So maybe I gave you a graph that looked like a parabola of some sort, okay? I give you this parabola and then you see that your equation is, you know, f equals ma. Well, I see here that this is a parabola, so I would expect some sort of x squared component and I don't have one here. So I would either say my graph isn't right 
or my equation isn't right. And because there's a, a, an issue there, you can go back and look at your problems. Okay. Proportionality, when given a symbolic solution, check the behavior of the answer when you change a given quantity. For example, when the force is doubled, does the acceleration also double? Okay, this is great. Hey, I know F equals MA. If my force goes to two force, does A also go to two A? Does it double, right? So you can just check, hey, I put a two on this side. There has to also be a two on this side. And when that happens, does that actually happen? Or are you getting some weird dependence here because your equation's wrong? Another great way to check things, cut things in half, cut things in fourths. If you have a squared function, when you square it, do you actually get the squared version or do you only get a, a doubling because you didn't actually square it? Stuff like that. Um, a really good thing to check. Special or limiting cases, check the behavior of the function as a specific variable goes to its limiting case. For example, sine as x goes to zero and as x goes to 90. Great. One of the best things that we know is that for something traveling down a ramp, I note that the acceleration is equal to g sine theta, assuming no friction, okay, um, based, on, based on where your angle is also. Um, but so if I, boom, pick my angle, whatever, um, a equals g sine theta is a common answer. Um, yeah, so if I know that my angle goes to 90, then I would expect something specific. If my angle goes to zero, I'd expect something specific as well, um, and so on. So dropping something straight down, I would expect A to equal 9.8 meters per second squared, um, just gravity. Um, and if it's flat, I would expect A to equal zero, um, which can be given by the sine function. So plug in some limiting cases, let x go to zero, let x go to infinity, whatever, whatever variables you have, plug in some limiting cases, special cases, see what happens and see if it behaves as you would expect it to, okay? Known values, um, compare your answer with known values. Example, solving for a speed of a car gives values between zero and 100. This is an excellent question. Um, one of the questions that I've seen recently is I have some sort of, air conditioning unit, um, a home air conditioning unit. And I know that it has say 120 volts. And I know that like it's a regular sized air conditioning unit. And I'm looking for the area of the capacitor plates. Okay. Looking for the area of the capacitor plates of a regular home AC. And the answer was something like 10,000 square meters. Okay, um, this is totally incorrect. It cannot be right. You know you did something wrong. Um, this is also sort of order of magnitude related too. Um, but if I'm using some sort of box ohm air conditioning unit, I'm not expecting something on the order of 10,000. I'm expecting things on the order of half a meter, quarter meter, something like that. Um, so you need to go back and check your work. Um, this is a really great tool because typically physics problems try and give you very reasonable questions that are very specific to life. So throwing a ball with a certain speed, solving for a car, traveling with a certain speed, what have you. Um, these are great things to check. Okay. And then the last one is relative quantities. So compare the relative magnitude of two related quantities. Um, specifically, the best example we have is vectors at certain degrees having X and Y components. So if I know that I have a vector this way, and say that value is 60 degrees, right? I now how have a y component and an x component. I would expect my y component to be bigger than my x component because it's 60 degrees up. So that y component should be bigger. If you solve for it and you get the x component is bigger, you've run into an issue um, and you need to look back and see what you did, okay? Overall, these sense-making techniques are just a way to check that your answer is a reasonable answer, okay? A lot of times when we're teaching physics classes, we're specifically trying to teach you to think like a physicist. Thinking like a physicist, the biggest thing you can do is check your answer for reasonableness. It may not be 100% correct, but if it's at least in the ballpark, or you think it's reasonable and can explain why it's reasonable, or explain why it's not reasonable, 
that's amazing, okay? We want you to think like a physicist, get into the mood of checking your answer, seeing if it's reasonable or not reasonable. Why is it reasonable or not reasonable? That's way more important to us at the end of the class than can you remember that F equals MA and so on. Um, getting you in that mindset of checking things, seeing reasonableness is way more important than just content. Um, yeah, so hopefully this helped you. Let me know in the comments uh, other types of videos like this that you'd like to see. Um, again, we've been Physics University. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.